Hi guys, <clears throat> I'm, I'm Abdul, um, Dr. Manon, um, I'm Blue Peanuts. Um, thank you Imran uh, for the introduction. Um, uh, guys, welcome to the course. Uh, it's good to have you on, it's quite a few of you, 40 of you I think from what I can see. Uh, numbers will probably go up in the next few minutes, so I'll just labour over the next few uh, minutes and do some introductory bits and bobs. Um, I've just actually come out of one of our UCAT courses uh, that I've been doing here in Manchester. So if I do seem a bit tired and a bit um, uh, rusty, then do forgive me. Um, I thought, um, you know, straight after a course, it might be a good idea to, whilst the information is fresh in my mind, um, there's been a number of questions and discussions we've had in the course, um, I could share some of those anecdotes with you. Um, sometimes that's quite helpful. That's why I said to him, look, I might look a bit... Um, um, I might look a bit tired or whatever, but it's probably a good time to latch this onto the back of a UCAT course uh, that we do. So I hope it helps. I hope it's useful. Um, let's. Um, I'm just going to bring up the chat thing. There you go. So I can see you all. Um, so let me see. Where are you guys? Are you all in the UK or where are you logging in from? So show me in the chat box where you're from. I want to see whereabouts you guys are logging in from. Manchester, UK, London, UK, Blackburn. Mm. Oh my God, everywhere. Manny, where's Manny? Scotland, brilliant. UK, brilliant. Scotland. So it looks like quite a spread. People from everywhere, really. Anybody from abroad? Well, Yusuf's in Iraq. Ahlan was Sahlan. Um, anywhere else? Anybody from Africa? Anybody? Oh, shukran, shukran. Thank you, Sarah. Um, um, where else have we got? Azerbaijan, but joining from the UK. Okay, welcome, welcome. I don't know any Azerbaijani except I could say um, Sami Yusuf is, I love his music and I, he's a great uh, singer. He's, he's an Azer, I think. Is, he, is that right, uh, Gulchi? Is that your full name? I can't see from, yes, he is, that's right. So he is uh, Azar. So yeah, you're welcome. Um, anyone else from abroad? Numbers are still going up. So we've got people joining us. Great, listen guys, you're all welcome. Um, um, I'll do uh, my best to justify today's, Imran wants me to focus on situational judgment. Uh, we'll do that. Um, I think he's got other webinars lined up to look at other sections at, at other dates. So. Um, hopefully we'll see you at, uh, on other days if, if, if that's what you want. Um, is that something you'd uh, be interested in? Hmm. Yay, lots of yeses, Imran, so you need to sort that out, mate. Um, so anyway, before I go into situational judgment, let me just share you my introduction slides from today, just to, just to have a chat generally about... Um, uh, get my chat box out. Yeah, so you guys can see it. Great stuff. Happy days. Uh, and let me minimize the chat box so that it doesn't take over everything. Great stuff. So I can still see some of the chat box, folks. So uh, apologies. Imran's uh, with us. So hopefully Imran, you can alert me to anything that I miss in the chat box. So um, just an introduction to myself and uh, Imran. Uh, you know, we, uh, for Blue Peanut, we've been doing this since about 2003. She's an Imran. Um, in that time, UCAT has evolved in a massive way, I would say. We've had new sections added. The whole exam itself has evolved. So we try to give you as up-to-date information as possible um, so that you, know, you can try and uh, arm yourself as best possible um, in, in doing this uh, um, um, test. So um, in terms of what we do, both me and Imran, we portfolio doctors. We work in the UK. Um, we, we work with universities, Manchester, especially Lancaster. UCLan, Agile, those kind of Northwest universities where we're based. Um, and so we do deal with undergraduate students and postgrads as well in our practices. This kind of work we've been doing since 2003, really um, we do have courses that people pay to come on to, but to be honest, what we use that for mainly is to pay towards the work we do a bit like tonight, um, the free kind of courses. We visit a lot of widening participation colleges and schools to kind of work on uh, uh, environments like that. Both me and Imran come from these environments, kind of humble backgrounds. Um, I think without the help of some people 
guiding us and mentoring us, I don't think both of us would become doctors today. But by the grace of God and the help of people who helped and mentored us, it helped us in our journey towards medicine. And really, that's the main ambition behind Blue Fight and help people get into these professions, not just medics, but dentists, vets, you know, people like that come to our courses. Uh, I had medics and dentists on our earlier course today. Uh, sometimes we get vets, nurses, physios, people like that coming because they also need to prepare for interviews. Um, so, you know, all that information is on our website. Um, you know, if you guys need help in any way, do message us. We're quite, you know, you're quite welcome to do that and we'll do our best to help you out. So, um, UCAT, you know, do you guys, um, let, you know, let's focus on UCAT. Do you guys know what it's all about? Have you read about UCAT? Do you do, or do you feel you don't know much about this test? Am I preaching to the converted here? Do you already know about UCAT or would you like me to just recap what the uh, UCAT's about? Don't know much, Afshan. Recap, please. Mm. Okay, so some of you know, some of you would like it. So I'll do a very quick recap over uh, what it's about. Um, look, UCAT, very simply, four fundamental areas it's going to test you on, things that are very important in becoming doctors, mental ability, attitudes, professional behaviours, and aptitude. And all five sections are designed to test you um, in this way. And they do that using Pearson View as a delivery vehicle. Um, and, and you can do that both online and also in person. Most of you are probably doing it in person if you're from the UK. Um, and I hope you've all booked. Have you all booked your test? Yes, 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 yes. Good. Not yet. Well, if you haven't, get on with it. Um, give yourself about a minimum eight weeks, if not 10 weeks worth of revision time. So I think you should be booking for end of August, early September, unless you've already started revising. Okay. So do not rush this. Do not cram this. Give yourself eight to 10 weeks preparation time. As you know, UCA, um, universities use it differently. My idea is don't look at that right now. Right now, your sole ambition is sit this test and score at least 2,800. Do not wince at me. I think it's achievable. Most of our students that come and work with us achieve it. We've got loads of students that go way beyond 3,000. If you do that, then go and look at universities. It'll give you loads of options in terms of where to apply to, open up more doors for you as opposed to, for example, applying with about two and a half thousand on your score sheet, it will limit your chances. So right now, the only objective you've got in your mind is to score 2,800 plus, okay? And then once you've done your UCAT, you've got your score in front of you, God forbid you get a score below that, then we can look at the universities you apply to, the kind of UCATs you apply to, do you sit the BMAT to give you more options, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So that's the kind of strategy you need to employ right now, get down to it, um, and um, work hard um, to achieve this kind of score. I've already said the kind of scores you need to aim for. Um, right, even now lots of people turn up and cry about being turned away. When you turn up for your test, photo ID, make sure it matches the application name you've put down or the address, etc. Make sure the two are identical when you turn up, turn up early. Make sure which, you know which test center you're going to, blah, blah, blah. All right, rules, basically be aware of the rules. Um, this kind of stuff is available, I'm pretty sure, online, uh, Bluepin, is that right, uh, Imran, on our website? Uh, introductory stuff, I'm sure, is available uh, online. Um, again, the different uh, scores, uh, different uh, sections have different amounts of uh, scores. You can see that the, the, the only four sections are scored numerically. The other section, uh, situation judgment, which we're talking about today, is done as bands. I'm not going to go into the actual techniques, uh, technical issues of banding, but I need you guys to get band ones and band twos. Band threes, mm, band fours, no chance. So really, um, you need to uh, focus on these bands. Um, I've talk talked about scores, etc. That's it really, this slide set. So I'm going to come out of it to go into, there you go. Can everybody see this? I think it's good enough, Imran. Um, and I'll bring up my chat box so I can see everything. That's great. So situational judgment, let's just talk about that. That's the section we're going to focus on for uh, for a few minutes today. Um, has anybody done situational judgment? Are you? Do you feel confident about it? No, kind of. No, no, no. Okay, no problem. 
So the guy, the ones that know how to do this fine, back off and let people who uh, aren't so confident. What are we? What is this testing? What is this testing? What is you, what is situation judgment testing? Do, does anybody know why? Why on earth would you? Thinking skills in scenarios, professionalism, medical ethics. Good, good, good. Excellent, 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 excellent. Yep, all the right answers are coming out. So look, the, these sections aren't, aren't being asked because of you can't want to fill space or anything. They're very essential things. So decision-making, abstract, verbal, they're all testing some very, very important domains, you know, the key four domains. And they have a slight emphasis in certain um, areas. So if you look at um, uh, situation judgment, it's looking at a number of things. It's looking at integrity, honesty, probity issues, and so forth. It's looking at perspective taking, you know, perspectives on things. Um, you know, how do you respond in a teamwork scenario? Um, it's looking at resilience skills. Does everybody know what resilience means? No? Strong. Yeah, I like it. Not giving up. Yeah, absolutely. So these are all the kind of things that would describe resilience, but in a sensible meaning. It means not putting yourself or the patient in any danger or people around you in any danger, but in a, in a within a reasonable, you know, you know, uh, within a reasonable uh, box, shall I say, or environment, shall I say. Uh, so you're not going to be irrational. You're not going to be overconfident. You're going to be. You're not going to be dangerous. But within a certain amount, acceptable level, you're going to be. You know, you're going to adapt to your surroundings. You're going to be agile. You're going to be, uh, you're going to give it a try. You're going to do your best, right? Um, and adapt, adapting to difficult situations, uh, complex situations, and so forth. Life's not easy. Uh, generally, uh, humans have complex lives, and you're dealing with human lives and issues, all right? So it needs a certain amount of agility on your part. Ethics and uh, moral issues, as you rightly mentioned, resolving conflicts. Uh, and so on and so forth. And you can see why medical schools and dental schools want to measure a certain amount of ability in that area. Now, in terms of times and questions and scenarios, as you can see, it's a very fast paced area, you know, about 26 minutes or so. Um, there's a number of questions and scenarios that come out of these 22 scenarios at the last count uh, of, of situational judgment. I don't know if it's changed lately. Um, but it's around about 22 questions. And in these kind of um, scenarios, what it's trying to do, it's asking you to step inside the shoes of who you are. So it's very important in the scenario that you don't think yourself as like being at home, being at school, being in the community. You got to live that scenario, be in that scenario. So there's a few things you need to think about. Um, number one, you know, who am I? Who are you in that scenario? Who are you relating to? Is it another patient? Is it another colleague? Is it um, the administration? What is it you're re relating to? And very, very importantly, contextualizing the scenario. What's going on in the scenario itself? Because that very much, um, so Imran, um, 66 questions apparently. So what you find is there's slight changes. Um, go on with these. Um, I've not looked at it since, um, uh, you know, the recent guidelines based on last year's guidelines. So I guess there'll be one or two changes, but I, overall guys, you know, don't kill me for slight differences. I don't think it matters anyway. Um, so the, the point is the exam will be over two hours. You'll be doing all five sections. Say so. Um, these kind of questions is uh, you want to look at appropriateness. You look at the kind of importance of a situation. And as I said to you, it's not numerical um, uh, outcome, it's, uh, it's banding. Um, and bottom line is, you gotta be pretty quick. What do you think? Doable? 30 seconds? Fifteen seconds to answer. It's quite challenging, isn't it? If you look at it on this, on face value here, it's quite challenging. It's not going to be easy. It's a bit mad, as Abir says. Yeah, a bit crazy. But no, I think what I'm trying to get to you is this actually, uh, with good amount of revision. That's why you can't cram this. Don't try and cram this in two weeks. You'll fail. You won't get a good score. 
you'll get a score closer to 2,000, probably less, and you'll be upset. Give yourself eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever you can afford uh, as much as possible and go and sit it properly. You know, you're only going to have one go. You can't do a reset, certainly not this year. Um, so give yourself time. Prepare well. I haven't got time to go through it, but in my um, on the Blue Peanut website, I do go through revision timetables and uh, how to split the time up, how to give yourself um, ample scope to do well. So as you can see, um, some of these questions will ask you to think about scenarios and say, well, how appropriate is something, right? Is it uh, very appropriate? Is it appropriate, but not so ideal? Is it inappropriate, but not awful? Um, or is it a very inappropriate thing to do, right? Um, you've also got um, the other scenario, which is, well, how important is something? How unimportant is something? OK, um, and we'll look at scenarios to try and help explain that um, in, and, and how you might want to have a strategy to address these uh, questions. One of the things I tell my students as a strategy is in both these type of questions is adopt the BIN strategy. So I always say to students, listen, uh, let's say the importance question, have an important BIN and a not important BIN. So when you see this scenario and you read this, the question that's attached to it, whether it's three, whether it's four questions, um, look at the first one and say, right, is it important or is it not important? Then what you do is you chuck it in that particular bin. Don't try to decipher whether it's very important or not so important at this stage. Generally make a distinction between important and not important so that you can go in the certain direction. Does that make sense so far? You do the same with appropriateness. Same, have bins. Appropriate, not appropriate. That's it. I'm not thinking about the nuances of appropriate and very appropriate, right? Or not appropriate or slightly inappropriate. Forget that bit for now. Chuck it in the right direction into the bin that you wanted to go into. Is it important or not important? That's all I want to know initially. That's the first strategy to employ when you see these questions. And then later on, as I go through questions, we'll talk about how we can decipher between the two. A few very, very key things to, key things to remember. <clears throat> this kind of section, right? Uh, and that's quite distinctive compared to other sections where you don't have to have pre-existing knowledge. And for, and, and for that matter, you might find pre-existing knowledge can actually harm your thinking in that scenario. The situational judgment is based on external knowledge. It's very important that you guys read around uh, the, 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 the certain key areas. And I'll go through what things to read, how to prepare yourself well to deal with this section, because it does rely on fundamental principles around medicine, dentistry, and so forth. Okay, so knowledge behind these topics are quite important. Okay, that's not to say it skews the actual scenario, as I'll show you in, in the first question, but certain bits of knowledge about probity, honesty, knowledge updating, patient priority and so forth is important, okay? Now then, um, um, generally I say um, to my students is, first principles, how does it reflect on you initially when you read it? And you know, having practiced for about eight to 10 weeks, what you'll find is you'll get very good at first impression you know, in that making a judgment very quickly. What you find is statistically people who overdo it, I can keep on thinking, thinking, thinking about it, they overdo it and they can end up getting wrong answers because they start to bring in emotion, they start to bring in um, kind of, they start to change, rationalize the scenario too much and, and, and end up getting wrong um, answers. And, and I would say, uh, by the time you sit in this paper, you should be able to go off it, uh, you know, pretty much straight away. This, um, um, sorry, um, can you see my cursor moving over it, Imran? Yeah. So this lozenge here that talks about each question, they're independent of each other. So like with each passage, let's say you get three or four questions. Don't think that, oh, one of them has to be very important. One has to be slightly important. Or one has to be unimportant. No, all of them can be very important. All of them can be very unimportant, right? They're independent of each other. Does that make sense?
Talk to me, man. Keep me entertained so that I know you're not falling asleep. Reply back. Use this uh, chat box. Otherwise, I ain't going to move on. Okay. So, yes, yes, yes. Great. Great. You're with me. Excellent. So, um, the next lozenge is say, look, um, base it on what's in front of you. Don't assume something, right? Base it on some of the principal knowledge areas that you've read about. Don't go beyond that. Okay. Um, let's move on to the next bit. There's this thing about full and part. I haven't got time to go through that today, Imran. I'm going to ignore that bit. It's uh, um, If I had a couple of hours to go through it, I'd go through it, but just read up about full and partial marks. You'll understand it better in the books and things that you read, or there's online sources as well. Your blue peanut, there's plenty on there on site online as well. Um, read the scenarios carefully, understand the nuances and the context it's putting there. All right, is somebody angry or not angry? You know, who is it? Who are you talking to? Minor, adult, what is it? Um, so understand the scenario well, don't overthink. Um, I would say be quick at it, be more agile with these um, questions. It'll do well for you. How do we know if it's just important or very, that through practice note, through practice, you've got to um, keep doing these to understand what's important or not. And also remember, I'm going to tell you about some of the key knowledge areas you have to know about. So where do you go, Node? Let's talk about that. Are you all medics or is there some dentists here? I can't remember what, what we... It's getting late, I'm getting tired, I'm old. Tell me, are you podiatrist? Podiatrist, wow, that's first. Dentist, medic, so quite a mix, fantastic, great. I'm glad there's a mix. So look, if you're a medic, read the GMC document, Good Medical Practice. Um, go to the um, MSC website and download the Achieving Good Medical Practice document. Again, it's based on the back of Good Medical Practice document in the GMC website, go and read it. If you're a dentist, it might surprise you to say that I want you also to read Good Medical Practice document and the MSC document, as you can see on this slide. Read it, read it, read it. All right. OK, if you're a dentist, what I also want you to do is have a look at this next slide. Read the statements. Right. Go to the GDC website and download the statements. It looks a bit like that on the slide. Any vets on here? Vets, vets, vets. Probably not. Occasionally we get vets joining. Um, Again, I, I quite like the RCVS document, actually, if you download it from the VETS website. What you find, even the medics, what I want you to do is read the dental statements because I quite like the dental statement when it talks about financial interests and conflict of interest. It's actually a lot more comprehensive in the GDC document than it is in the GMC, for obvious reasons. In the UK, medics are more into the clinical stuff rather than financial issues and conflicts coming in that way. If you look at the Australian document that the... Uh, Australian uh, uh, Medical Council creates. Um, it's even more talking about commercial interest, sponsorship, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, you might just want to go there and have a look at what's going on. Why? Because, listen, in the UK, dentistry is a lot more commercial than your average medical speciality. However, let's be realists, even within the NHS, finance is coming into it a lot more. In the future, I think, I think, don't shoot me, I think, um, the issue of co-payment, the issue of payments in general for certain aspects of treatment will come more into medicine, all right? Raiz, what do you mean required for interviews? Um, well, this section is really good, actually. Situation judgment, it actually will prepare you very well for interviews because these issues are, you know, the backbone of the kind of things that are discussed in interviews. Does that make sense, Raiz? How many hours, Noor? Um, starting off with one or two hours a day. Uh, very quickly, I haven't got time to go to revision plan, but what I want you to do over a seven day period is right now, most of you, you shouldn't have any exams. You've got, you know, you can chill out, do lots of things. In the seven days, I want you to spend one day chilling, do other things, enjoy, travel, whatever, meet friends, family, etc. Then you've got six days left. One of the six days, I want you to buddy up with friends from college or wherever, so that you can bounce uh, with each other, you know, areas where you don't understand, areas that you have issues with. You can kind of cross-examine each other, help each other understand. So what we're going to do is pass UCAT by helping each other. So peer learning one day, okay? Do that, that's really good, you'll benefit from it. Um, it's a very good technique. We teach our medical students, dental students, postgraduate students and doctors and dentists. So peer learning. Employ that early right now. I know you might not be as used to it coming from schools and colleges, but one day do that. 
The other five days, I want you to simply split it, okay, across evenly. So one day verbal reasoning, one day situation judgment, one day, um, you know, uh, decision making, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One section per day. Then some of you might have a like, for example, I had a boy um, who came to the live course today. He has a very much big weakness in verbal reasoning section. So what he's going to do, as well as evenly going through each section per day, um, over about two or three days, he's going to also do a verbal reasoning section on top of the other section. Do you get what I mean? Just so that he gives it a bit more priority. Okay? I can't go through verbal reasoning history, not today. Um, so, yeah, initially one to two hours um, in the first three weeks or so, then try and amplify it to two to three hours in the next three or four weeks, and so forth. Try to get to about two to three hours toward the end of it. In the last two weeks, of revising, what you really should be focusing on is your weak areas, you know, battering them, battering them so that you keep on improving those weaker areas, okay? BMAT revision, listen guys, again, I haven't got much time. I've done a video, uh, I've done a blog on it as well. Go and read it on the website. Um, if you do, very quickly, if you do well in your UCAT, it sets you up really well for section one in BMAT. Section two, go and get the CGP uh, science books, GCSE level, practice them for section two. Very simple, very easy to do. Section three, good, be good at essay writing. You get a choice of uh, an essay to do. Write it well. Good essay writing technique, you'll do well. Simple. BMAT is not that difficult. Don't limit yourself, just UCAT. Increase your chances if you want. If you want to apply the other strategy whereby you do UCAT first, and based on how you do in your UCAT, you might stick to UCAT universities. If you feel, mm, I haven't done so well, you might just want to open the doors a bit more by doing the BMAT test later. Does that explain that as a strategy? Right? Don't worry. If you have to later do a bit, a bit more revision, you know, CGB books and things like that, you can do that. That's the strategy people employ. Other people simply say from the outset, I'm going to do both UCAT and BMAT. Go for it. Don't be scared. Statistics will tell you that if you do well in UCAT, you'll do well in BMAT. Statistics will also tell you that just because you're doing both does not mean you'll do uh, you spread yourself thin. One actually strengthens the other. So actually doing both is not a bad idea at all. If you're not wedded to the fact about go, applying to BMAT universities like Imperial, Leeds, Lancaster, and so forth, then fine, just do UCAP. You know, so for example, some students will say, listen, doc, I'm not bothered about Leeds. I just want to apply to Manchester, Liverpool. I want to apply to Birmingham and apply to um, Leicester. Fine. OK, stick to your UCAT because you're quite wedded to those and your UCAT score is allowing you to, et cetera, et cetera. Your GCSE grades, your predicted A-levels, all of that is fitting in fine with those universities. OK, fine. Stick to UCAT. Do you get it? You've got to be quite emotionless and scientific about how you apply just because yeah, Imperial College, your dad went and your granddad went to it. Don't be too emotional about it. You may not go to Imperial. For goodness sake, just get into a med school or a dental school because at the end of the day, wherever your degree's from, it's actually okay, all right? Um, I've got, um, um, well, people from all uh, universities I know of now who some have done well, some haven't done so well, some have done differently. You know, these are postgraduate things. Once you've become doctors and dentists, Remember, there's more to life. There's other things that dictates where you end up. Um, don't be too drawn on where you apply to or not. Apply to them only based on scientific basis of, you know, getting in. Maximize your chances of getting in. So don't be emotional about it. Let's move on. Okay. We haven't got much time, so let's move on. So remember that document. If you go there, the reason I said, look, have a look at it is because one of the sections you'll read about is knowledge, skills, and performance. If you read it, I'm just going to skim over this topic. It will tell you about care. Where does it rank? Making the care of the patient your first concern. Seems logical, all right? Uh, up to date, staying up to date. Something very important about staying up to date about knowledge and skills. If you don't stay up to date, um, you're going to become more out of date and you're going to become more dangerous as a professional. Recognizing your resilience, it has to be coupled with recognition of competence um, so that you're not a dangerous clinician. Um, in terms of uh, making patient a priority, yes, of course, there's a recognition at the um, uh, councils that um, your patient is your top priority. Okay, they should be your first concern in clinical scenario. However, is that written in stone? Can that be 
sometimes not be the case. Can you think of any scenarios where really that might not be the case? No answers. So let me give you an example. You know, good, excellent. Shanaz, well done. Patient harming others, patient is fine. Excellent, they're coming in. So you see, you know what I'm talking about. The scenario might be, Shanaz, that, um, you know, a patient is being violent, aggressive in the outpatient clinic uh, to the sister who is manning your uh, main office, not allowing for triage to happen, et cetera, et cetera. The scenario might set you up like that, okay? Where, and then one of the questions could be, you know, regardless of what's going on, it, um, you go and take a really good history, right? So the scenario is probably telling you actually that might not, you know, if it was a normal situation, it's important that, or it's appropriate for you to go and do that. But in this scenario, can you see, it's changing the whole context. And it might mean actually, you know what? It's not safe to go there and take a history, regardless of things. No, you have to take into account what it's telling you. The patient is violent, the patient is, you know, um, is, 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 is threatening harm to you and your colleagues. Of course you wouldn't go there. You know, it'd be very inappropriate um, to go there and expose yourself to harm, you see? So it's not always necessarily right. Patient, uh, you know, comes first, regardless of what's going on. The patient's collapsed in front of you, okay? You need to do basic life support on them, but they're in a, um, you know, they're on the bottom of a cliff. Are you gonna jump off a cliff to go and save them? Of course you won't. You're gonna get them, get to them safely. They've collapsed in a puddle of water. Um, are you going to do basic life support or advanced life support in that situation? No, you're going to make sure you take that patient to safety, make sure it's dry, et cetera, because let's say you have to defibrillate them. You're gonna end up electrocuting yourself and killing yourself, right? So that's no good. You know, somebody's collapsed in the middle of a motorway. I don't know why they would be in a motorway, but let's say in the middle of a road or something, you're not just gonna jump out and provide basic life. So you're gonna first make sure traffic is stopped, you know, so that nobody runs you over. There's no point you're no good to the patients, are you? In effect, actually, making sure you're safe is actually better for the patient because in this scenario, you're no good to a patient if you're dead, if the bus has run you over. Hmm? That makes sense. Context, context is so important. Let's have a look at one or two questions, all right? I'm rushing, I know, but we've just got limited time, so apologies. So who wants to do this, all right? I mean, let's just do it as a group perhaps and, and uh, try this because it'd be nice to, because we've got a chat, chat box, we can see what people think. Um, so look at this, uh, one of these UCAT questions. You're a medical student. So who are you in this scenario? Remember I said to you before, who are you in that scenario? Who are you? Are you a consultant? Are you a doctor? You're a medical student, medical student. Right, so yeah, train yourself to number one, see who you are in that scenario. Number two, are you in the street? Are you in the hospital? Are you in the hospice? Where are you? GP practice, GP practice. Good, so you understood your environment, where you are. So you might think, okay, I'm a medical student. You're not just in your friend's house, are you? Your behavior changes depending on where you are, okay? So one of your patients needs a follow-up appointment and you send the receptionist a message through the computer system to book this. She comes to you very angry and says she does not like computers and tells you to write your request in a post-it note. Let's change that scenario to say, right, you and your friend um, in your halls of residence, right, you've sent a message via WhatsApp to him. He comes to you and is really peed off saying, listen, why didn't you send me a post-it note or a written note rather than WhatsApp? Do you think how you respond to him could be very different to the way you respond in this scenario? Yes or no? Yes, absolutely, good, excellent. I'm glad you're seeing that. Why? Because you know, if your friend came and said, oh, listen man, why are you WhatsApping me for? Why are you not sending me? You might say, get lost, you know, bugger off. Who do you think you are? I'm gonna WhatsApp you, move on with the times. Are you an idiot? Everybody's WhatsApping these days. That's how you, look, I'm just being honest. That's how you are in that scenario. In a GP surgery, you're a medical student, you're not, you're probably not a fixed member of staff there, are you? If you're a medical student there, would you agree with that? Whereas this receptionist is a fixed member of staff. Do you see that changes dynamics? You're clearly not the consultant or the GP principal there, are you? Yeah, you're 
a medical student, you're learning there. Okay, that's your status there. The um, receptionist is a permanent member of staff who's upset because you've, you know, she's or he's expressing frustration. He's angry. Well, it's a she actually in the scenario. She's um, so it doesn't matter. It could be he or she. You know, is she in a good mood? No. So would it then affect how you respond to her? Yes, good, excellent, excellent. Remember, if you read those GMC and GDC document, you'll come across conflicts, how to manage conflicts. This scenario is very much going into conflict situation, okay? The principle of conflict is to escalate or de-escalate. De-escalate, good, excellent. See, it's not rocket science, guys. This is, it's not difficult at all. So yeah, so this is the overall principle of what you've been testing. Can you see how background knowledge is helping us a bit here? It's not in a way dictating the scenario, but what it's doing is affecting your behavior and how you react to a scenario, okay? Because you've read about conflict, you, you've read about de-escalation and so forth. You might have read about confidentiality, and that in the, in, the, in the literature that I've talked to you about, and you might think, okay, if somebody breaches patient confidentiality, you have to correct it, you have to probably apologize to the patient, you have to disclose it perhaps, you have to perhaps report it. Do you get it? There's a sequence of response in a given situation, okay? Um, your um, fellow junior doctor, all right, is uh, exchanging a bag from a guy in the corridor, all right, in the hospital, and you happen to see that. What do you think is going on? He's getting a bag of something from a guy, gives him a bit of cash. What's he doing? Something dodgy maybe, drugs, drugs, dealing, etc. Yeah, can you see, your first impression is that. But can you be sure? Yes or no, can you be sure that's happening? No. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, the, the samosa shop I go to, they give me samosas in a brown bag. Do you get it? It could simply be, you know, a, a samosa that he's getting from this guy down the road. Do you see what I mean? He's probably ordered it on Uber Eats. Exactly, good. So yes, it's saying that you're not going, because you've read about these things, about reporting dodgy behavior, you know, of course, if there is drugs, if he's buying drugs, you've established that fact, you know, Let's say this happens, okay? I'm not saying it will happen, but in real life, okay? So Daoud, you're there on my screen. I can see your name. In real life, you've said, you know, you're friends with Andy. Uh, you go to school together. And on your way to school, you find that he's, you know, getting some drugs from somebody. Are you necessarily going to go to school and tell the head teacher about him? Or would you just talk to him and try and sort things out? What would you do, Daoud? Second option. Yeah, quick, good. You know, you'd probably sort it out between him and say, listen, pal, what are you doing? Are you, you're messing up your future. Please, come on, sort it out. You're not going to take it to school, are you? Probably not. You might do if it's in school, if he's dealing to other students. So the context changes things, you see. You know, you've got this colleague. Exchange, let's say you establish his drugs because you spoke to him, etc. Now, he's done it while he's working in the hospital corridor. Does that Dawood change how you respond? Will it be your first option or your second option? First option being reporting this to higher authorities or second option, which is just have a quiet word with him. What would you do? Oh, come on, Dawood. Don't say that to me, man. No, if it's your fellow colleague, <laughs> if it's your fellow colleague, I don't care how good a friend it is, right? You don't have a quiet word. If you've established he's stolen your controlled drugs or he's taking drugs or he's drinking on the job, come on, man. I don't care how good a friend he is to you. Please don't have a quiet word. All right, this needs to go further because he could kill a patient next. Yeah, remember that patient hierarchy of needs? So yeah, it does change your behavior. Okay, enough of that. Let's come back to this scenario. So. She's angry, she's coming to you. Um, she, yeah, good H, yes, I agree with you. She doesn't like computers, tell you to write it on a post-it note, hand it to her in person rather than sending a message. Um, so in this scenario, you can see that this receptionist is angry, she's peed off with you. Look, once it on a post-it note, um, you know, you can probably infer that that's how she does things. It's probably a practice that 
those things written rather than computer-based. Because remember, in real life, some hospitals are more IT pro than others. Some people, some GP surgeries are a lot more IT savvy than others. So c'est um, la vie. That's what happens. Not everybody's on the same um, trajectory. Um, so let's see how appropriate your actions are. Okay. So look at the first one. Okay. So uh, Ihinosan, you're on my screen, so I'm picking on you. Is it? Is that how you pronounce it? Ihinosan? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can I pick on you? Is that okay? Okay, cool. So what do you think about the first stem, which is tell the receptionist to keep up with the times and learn how to use the computer system. So before you say anything, remember my initial, uh, my initial principle, which is where are you going to chuck that stem in your, in your appropriate bin or inappropriate bin? Do me that first. Appropriate or inappropriate? Excellent. Afshan agrees with you, so it must be correct. Fatima does, Maisa does. Brilliant. So you guys are with me, yeah? So as soon as you have that kind of mentality with these questions, it's easy, all right? Inappropriate. So we've decided. Now, remember, we've eliminated two options straight away, okay? Easy now. Now, remember, context, where are you? You're a medical student. You're not the GP principal, okay? Um, you're not the GP principal. You're not more senior or anything like that. You are a student there, you're learning there, receptionist, upset, angry, conflict situation. We don't want to escalate anything. See, I'm starting to sway people towards what, the way I want you to think. Excellent, good. Everybody's going very, can you see what I've done to you by doing this? Can you see what's happening here? Yeah, good, excellent. That's exactly what I wanted you to select. It is very inappropriate. She's upset, she's angry. She's probably more senior than you because she's just been there. Remember, uh, doctors, it doesn't matter who you are. You're, you know, you're supposed to be a horizontal management structure. Everybody's equal, right? So just because she's a receptionist does not mean you can have a go at her. No, treat her like any human being. She's upset, rightly or wrongly, she's upset with you. Don't escalate it. Okay, then. Okay, uh, Denise, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, um, you know, something like that, perhaps you might say. What you won't say is, oh, listen, keep up with the times, mate. You know, learn how to use the system. Okay, there's other ways of doing that. Training, feedback, etc. But no, you wouldn't. No, no, even if you were a GP, right? I get this. I, I run my own practice. Um, sometimes I do get reception staff upset with me. No, just because I'm the boss. No, that doesn't change anything whatsoever. She's upset. Give her time. Sorry, mate. Okay, when she's cooled down, later on, we can address that. We can address it through feedback, we can address it through training, et cetera, et cetera. Now's not the time to say, keep up with the times, pal, get on with it. No, are you with me? Okay, so now let's look at the next scenario. Let's follow this through, all right? Remember, these are independent of each other. So the next one also can be very inappropriate, but let's see if it is. Tell the reception and post-it notes can easily be lost and you will think about her request. So you're not gonna do what she says, you will think about it. She's upset. First of all, tell me, is this appropriate thing to do or inappropriate? Most of you are appropriate from what I can see, sorry, inappropriate, which is actually correct. Some of you, this is what I get all the time. Some go the appropriate, but not ideal scenario. No, always contextualize if she was, a pleasant, if she wasn't too upset, perhaps you might go the appropriate way, but actually inappropriate is the more correct one because the escalation of a conflicting situation. Breach of confidentiality, I get what you're saying about these things, but um, listen, um, you don't have to put the patient's name on, you can just put number on, so there's uh, lots of ways around that, so that's not in there, confidentiality issue but certainly angry, et cetera, tells you there's a conflict situation. So yeah, so we're gonna say that it is inappropriate, all right, in this situation that you'll think about it. No, you know, in real life, what you probably do is, so, okay, all right, Denise, you know, I'll send you a post, you know, let's diffuse this situation, okay? So um, yeah, we'll think about it. Um, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll affirm, we'll, we'll, we'll work with that. So it's inappropriate. Okay, now that you said it's inappropriate, do you think it's very, or is it not awful, but inappropriate? What do you think? 
Oh, you guys are good, man. Don't worry about it. You'll do well in UCAT. Good, excellent. Yeah, so it's not, you know, you've not necessarily made it really bad by saying that, but it is inappropriate and you probably wouldn't do it, but it's not going to like be the a cardinal thing to do. Okay, mistake or anything. Good. What about the next one? Show the receptionist how to use, so Shweta, you're the last person on the screen, so let's do this with you. Show the receptionist how to use the messaging system on the computer. You know, so it's not next week, it's now, now. She's upset, she's with you, she's next to you. Come here, Denise, let me show you how to do it. Ooh, I think I'm getting half and half here. Okay, so when you, those of you that said appropriate, I agree in the sense that, look, that is the right thing to do, to teach somebody, to improve things. But look, the person's there. Remember the scenario, they're upset, they're angry, they're right next to you. Now's not the time to teach them, guys. Yeah, if you suggested that, it's not awful. It's not extremely inappropriate, but it is slightly inappropriate, okay? So does that make sense? Or am I being a bit alien in the way I'm thinking? Makes sense, makes sense. I hope so, guys. I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to get across. Do you have to get each point? No, 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 Afshan, no, no. Um, I said earlier on, you could repeat. So you, for all you know, all of these four stems could be in a, very inappropriate. Yeah, they're independent of each other. You don't have to rank them, nothing like that. They can be independently answered, yeah? Good, excellent. What about this last one? Oh, Denise, sorry, sorry, fine, no problem, I'll do that, no problem. What do you think of that? H, I'll come back to that, very appropriate. Okay. So those of you that said very appropriate, I'll tell you now, you win. You win. Because whenever you say, say apology and sorry, more often than not, or not, you're, it's a really good thing. You know, um, let's say, um, I don't know, you have a bit of a fallout with your friend or your mom. Or your dad. Listen, even if you're not wrong, to use the word apologize is not necessarily an admission of guilt, is it? You know, um, it's, it, it, it's a diffusing word. It diffuses that situation. It just calms people down. Oh, Denise, I'm sorry about that. It doesn't mean you're wrong. What you're doing is de-escalating. It's a really good de-escalating strategy. So when a patient comes in, he's, um, you know, he, he says, look, you know, you've given me the um, uh, wrong antibiotic doctor. Da, 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 and I actually know that I've given the right antibiotic. You know, it's nothing wrong to say, look, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, I'm, I'm sorry how you're feeling about it, but can we talk about this? Do you see what I mean, Shweta? It's a nice way to diffuse things. But saying you will do as she says is not very appropriate, I think. Well, well, no, at the moment, by doing it on a post-it note, Sarah, um, it doesn't. it's not the end of the world, is it? The job still gets done. Patient care can still happen. Do you get it? You know, most, uh, even now, a lot of um, clinicians still do use paper. People, especially in their, you know, 60s and beyond and whatnot, you know, you'll find they're not as computer savvy as you guys, you see. So what are you going to say to them? It can still work. My partner who re retired two, year, two years ago, he never used our computer messaging system. But there were ways of using paper, which, would, which was auditable, which was... Um, it managed it did have its flaws in that you could potentially lose a message so there's a flaw there in terms of auditing standards but you could have a pretty robust system you know um on a written form it's not a, a massive cardinal mistake to go on paper you know so no it's not an admissional guilt or anything like that but what you're doing there is you're just diffusing the situation okay i'm sorry fine i'll do it like that now afterwards you might and she's cooled down denise listen you know earlier on we had this situation I don't know. I just we just trained on computer a lot more. I don't know. What do you think? What are your views on that? Shit? Is it something? Do you want me to show you how to? You know, is it something we can work on? You know, I guess I'm sorry about upsetting you earlier on. You know what I mean? That's what you would do in real life in that professional situation. That's what I do. Does that? Do you get it a bit more?
Do you get it? Do, does it work? Okay. Fatima and Dylan say yes. Thank you. Welcome, Innocent. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right. I'll move on then in that case. So thanks for working with me on this scenario. I just help it's helping you to illustrate those principles of who are you? What's this the who are you engaging with? Number three, what's the context in the actual um, scenario rather than what you might perceive it to be or what you might, it might be in, in another situation or what it would be at home or another environment. You very much work with what's in front of you. Okay, so let me try. Oh gosh, it's five, two. Um, you, you there, Imran? You're running out of time, aren't we? Yeah. Um, so what I'll do, guys, is um, rather than going through when the question asks about important, is it the same? Yes, absolutely, Dylan. Um, it's just semantics, really. In some situation, it's important for you to do something rather than appropriate. That, that's all. In terms of principles, it's similar, actually. Very similar. It doesn't, um, excuse me. What's the next, the other question? Um, sorry, I can't see the whole question. Um, I'm in year 12 at the moment. Would it be possible for me to take my UCAT exam this summer as a practice and then take it in the finals? Well, don't you do it after year 12? I don't quite get that question. I mean, each year you can only sit it once. Um, oh, let me just increase screen. Um, I don't really know what you mean by that. I'm in year Sully. I'm in year twelve at the moment. Would it be possible for me to take my UK exam this summer? You can't because if you've done year twelve, this is the one you're sitting for your um, application, isn't it? Or am I missing something? Is UCAT required if you're thinking of biomedicine? Um, no, uh, there's lots of universities that you don't do UCAT for biomedicine. It's for it's for medicine. You sit one in your yeah yeah. Sorry, as or oh, going into year twelve. Uh, no, my friend, don't, don't don't go and do a UCAT. Just um, if you want, if you really want to get um, 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 if you really want to do it, I don't know why you would personally. I would focus. I would have a nice summer if I were you, Sully. Go and chill. Enjoy your summer. There's plenty of time. I focus on your year 12 and get really nice predictions. Um, yeah, as Fatima says, enjoy yourself. Really, there's there's plenty of time to do it. There's plenty of practice sources you can do. As I, you know, I would leave it until you've done your year 12 exams. Focus on that. Predictions are so important because if your predicted grades aren't right, you're not going to get in, right? So there's a place for these things, yeah? The, yeah, it does, Amana. It only applies for that year entry. That's right. Um, and um, if for whatever reason you don't get in that year and you have to apply again the following year, the last year's UCAT doesn't carry over. You'd have to resit it again. Um, is med entry better or Medify? Listen, guys, we as Blue Peanut partner up with Medify only because we know the guys that run Medify. We're good friends. Uh, med entry is good as well. So um, take your pick. Um, if you came to our courses, yes, we give a discount for the Medify courses. It's not to say that anyone else isn't good. Um, it's just we found that, you know, um, I don't know, we're just good friends with Medify people. So that's all. That's the only reason why we link up with them. Do you get the problems or recording of this event? I don't think so, um, Deborah. I think logistically it becomes, it gets difficult. Um, I, do, I, I do do a fair bit of videos and blogs if you look on our website. So please do. Um, have a look at them. Past Medicine does some free resource money, you're right. Um, the Where can you get a discount for Medify? And that's when you do, you know, the live UCAT courses that we do and that gives you, I don't know if there's any other way of discounts through uh, Blue Pino, I don't know. Um, but do message us, Imran might have a ways to get it for you, I'm not sure. Or I might have just opened up a right uh, conundrum from Imran there. So I apologize if I've done that, Imran. Um, the I know, uh, Anuita, I know appropriate, I know it's, um, like I say, follow my strategy, appropriate or inappropriate, which bin would you chuck it in? And that way you've eliminated either inappropriate or appropriate. That's the best way to do it. Otherwise, you'll have this problem of, oh, it could be, do you know what I mean? The first strategy is get rid of one or the other. 
and that way you've only got either the appropriate two or the two inappropriates to choose between. It makes life a lot easier to do it that way. Trust me, you'll get more uh, correct marks that way. Um, what would you say is a solid UCAT score for dentistry? Okay, so listen, um, uh, Abir, I would say for all of you, not just dentistry, aim for 2,800. I mean that, I'm not joking. 2,800 for dentistry and for medicine. Um, if you work, if you give so eight to 10 weeks, Follow my revision plan that's on our website. Imran, is it um, downloadable, mate? Yeah, Gulchin, of course it is. No, no problem. It's a bit more competitive. Um, I, and more, a lot of our students do really well. Um, you know, I've got so many students I can point you towards. 3,100s, 200s, 300s. You know, yeah, if you get your head down, all of you are clever people. Don't forget who you are, guys. Have really, really uh, amount, big amount of confidence. Um, the my side just do your maths mate uh how you over 2000 just do your maths for each section it's on one of my slides if you go on UCAT you can see what each section is marked out of um and and, and the maximum you can get is 3600 8 to 10 do you think enough no matter how weak or strong right yes Nasreen I mean you know remember all of us will have our weak spots guys all of us will have weak spots so what you do is during that revision time you might spend like, you know, the five days where you're doing the five sections. So as I said to uh, Muhammad earlier on, um, so let's say over three days, you might, you know, so his weakness was verbal reasoning. So what he's going to do is two or three days of the week, he will do verbal reasoning as well as the other section. Yeah. So he will focus more on verbal reasoning. And also remember, the other thing you're going to do is one of those days, the sixth day in that week, you're going to purely go through troubleshooting areas, your weak areas. All right. And that way, what you do is build in your weak area. And also, you're not ignoring your strong areas. What you don't want to do is over that period is ignore your strong areas. And that becomes your weak point nearer to the exam as well. Would you recommend spacing out doing mocks through, throughout the um, my, OK, Dawood, you can do that only if you don't get put off. Right. I personally said do mocks in the last two or three weeks um, more regularly as opposed to in between. In between, focus on. Uh, I haven't got time to do the baking of the cake. I talk about that in one of my videos uh, in that in everything, get your systems right. Do that over the first six to eight weeks and then leave the time to uh, do mocks later on. Um, I'm actually resitting did terribly last year. got under too far. So I'm trying. Do you think I can do something? Of course you can. The very fact that you've done it last year, Anita, um, gives you a big insight above others. Uh, and, and hopefully do better and ask yourself what did I do last year okay is it my revision plan did I rush something did I ignore my weak areas uh, or so you know generally you'll find if you're honest with yourself you'll find something wasn't quite right or even the night before you might be a bit, you might you might have studied right of the day before you were stressed on the day you were tired on the day you know on the day again I talk about it in my revision plan on the day you know get up early make sure you're there early make sure you don't overdo it make sure um, you, you know, you stay in a hotel the night before if you go to a center and it's far from home. Uh, if it's not too far from home, get there about an hour early and kind of, do you know what I mean? Give you, don't rush things. You're nice and relaxed when you're there. Okay. Um, time question, Naomi. Again, in my opinion, time yourself towards the end, maybe two, three weeks before the exam rather than initially, because again, I find that puts people off. Okay. Any good books read for medicine interview? Not for today, Tanvir. Again, I do cover that in the blogs. Have a look at them. Um, there's lots of sources. Um, and, and I go through quite a few different areas of medicine interviews in the blogs. Have a look at our um, uh, website. Imran's put the link on. H, have a look at that. If you're also doing a morning slot, what, what do you recommend doing to warm or should it be? So like, you know, in the morning, guys, make sure, you know, that would you get up early. Make sure you, I don't know, go for a walk or something. Make sure you have something that keeps you awake. So have some long carbs, you know, things that, you know, porridge or whatever, you know, that, so you've got plenty of energy. Remember your brain needs lots of energy for it to work. Don't starve yourself, you know, don't, you, you know, so eat a nice breakfast uh, make sure, uh, you know, uh, you might want to have a bit of some bounty or something that's giving you sugars, whatever. Um, so, so read about that. I do, uh, I think is it a blog I've done on that Imran, um, how to prepare well. Video, I think that if you look at my YouTube channel, I think I talk about preparing for that as well. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I've just finished year 11 and don't know a lot about 
you can't help it. Yeah, so uh, path, uh, path, you know, like I say, um, go if you're a medic, you know, read up about the GMC document, the uh, MSC document I told you about, look at G General Dental Council website, look at the Australian website, have a look what BMA talk about, I will look what GMC talks about, build up knowledge level that way. You know, you've just finished your 11. Um, you know, don't get to, don't lose sleep over it. Okay, you've got your 12 in between. I don't think you need to worry too much. Just do some reading here and there. You've got you've got luxury of time, unless unlike some of your year 12 colleagues here. What I'd rather you did right now is enjoy your summer. Okay, so don't do anything this summer. All right, there's more to life part. Go and enjoy your summer. Okay, maybe go and do a bit of shadowing somewhere. Spend some time with. Um, pharmacy or perhaps some shop or something get some life skills do some volunteering etc etc that type of thing things that you might enjoy okay do um you know um, enjoy your hobby etc um don't uh, get too worked up um uh about it now maybe just do some background reading uh where is the UCAT timetable i don't know off the top of my head it will be on the website somewhere imran hopefully can point you if it's not there imran maybe put a um uh, we can send an email out to show people where it is. Yes, you get your UCAT results straight away. Where is the UCAT time tool? So Imran, can we look for that and see where it is, please? I, I'm sure it's in one of the blogs or something like that. Um, Imran will send out a link to you all, so be great. So Imran will sort that out for you. Um, what's that? I think, um, yeah. Is it okay if we bring this to a close? I've got to catch, um, uh, I've got to leave the hotel now, you see. So um, hope that was useful, guys. Was it useful? Not a problem. Um, keep a lookout for announcements that Imran makes. Every now and again, he'll put these free courses on for different sections. And, you know, I quite enjoy doing them. It's not a problem at all. Um, and, and honestly, look, remember, Blue Peanut wasn't born to make, you know, we don't, you know, courses, some of these courses are paid for, but we use it to actually do our work that we do with widening participation schools and colleges. So our main purpose, Blue Peanut, is to actually help people get into medicine and dentistry, like myself and Imran, we wouldn't have come into medicine had some other people not helped us. That is actually the main work at Blue Peanut. If you've got questions, if you've got friends, if you feel, um, you know, and even on the paid courses, if you feel some of you might need a bit of help or, you know, to come on course, just don't be scared to ask, just email us and say, look, I can't afford it or whatever. Can I come? We'll sort something out for you. We'll sort something out, okay? Um, we're in a hotel situation here, you know, some students paid today. Why? Because A, they can pay, okay? They can pay. It helps to pay the bills for our website, SEOing, uh, event bright costs, um, hotel costs here, feeding the students while they're here. Do you know what I mean? Things that just helps to keep us going. We can't forever afford to do everything from our own uh, pockets, you see. That's why you have some of these paid elements of the of Blue Peanut. I hope that makes sense. You have work experience opportunities in Manchester. I can link you up, Anwita, if you really wanted to find uh, places, then email us. I've got friends who work as GPs, consultants, and so forth in Manchester area. And similarly across the UK, um, I can't profess that I've got friends in every city, of it, but you know, I've been to university with about 300 other people. And over the years, I've got to know colleagues from, yeah, same Nasreen in London. I've got some friends there. If you, you know, I can certainly ask for you. I've got friends who are GPs and consultants there. I can certainly, Imran can do the same. So yeah, by all means, get in touch with we'll do our best. If we can't, and if our friends in those cities can't, then by all means, we'll just humbly say, look, sorry, you know. Uh, it's a support at bluepeanut.co.uk. Just email us on that. I'll do our best to help you. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely evening. Goodbye.